All right. So I guess we'll move on to accessions now. So accessions are the germplasm lines that are used in the trial. And the use case that we're going to go through now is that we have this list of 10 germplasm lines that were in that demo data set that we have. And we want to know, are these lines already in the database? And then if they're not in the database, how do we add these lines to the database? The one thing that we've been working on is creating this bulk germplasm search tool. So we're hoping that this is an easy way to search a list of uh, lines at once to see if they're in the database. So we have links for each of the crops here. And what this takes you to is this page here. So this sort of lives outside of breed base, but it works through an API that talks directly to the breed base database. So you can select the database that you're working with. And then the different database terms that you want to try to match with your search term. So in the database, each accession has a unique germplasm name. You can also have alternate names in, that are listed as synonyms. And then if it has registered accession numbers, such, such as a Grin PI number, you can search those as well. So you can toggle each of these database terms that you want to try to match to your search terms. And then it has a number of different search routines that you can use. So an exact match will just match if the names are exactly the same. And all of these are case insensitive. So it will still match if there's variation in letter case. There's a remove punctuation search routine that will remove any special characters such as dashes, spaces, or underscores and try to match that up with one of the database terms. So this is helpful if maybe if you know you use a dash as a delimiter but someone else just uses a space or an underscore this will still try to match your term up with a, a matching database term the substring match search routine will see will check to see if your search term is a part of another database term and then there's an edit distance comparison which will find matches that are up to a maximum of the selected max here. So in this case, up to two differences in characters or insertions or deletions. So for our, our example, we will use these three search routines and search all of the database terms. So this is the list of lines that are in the demo data. So I'll copy that and then just paste it into the search box here and then we'll search and it finds some potential matches so for Bess, we found an exact match called Bess, and then there's also another line that it found with these two search routines it had found Bess star so if you want to find more information about these uh, database records you can click the the uh, database name and it'll bring up more information about the germplasm record that we have in the database. So you can inspect the database records and decide which one of these is a match. So for this case, we're gonna match best to best and Ernie to Ernie and not the, the star variations. We found an exact match for all of these LES and NC14 lines. And it did not find any match for this NC15 line or this VA14W line. So we know that these two lines don't exist in the database and they're the ones that we're gonna to have to add to the database before we can add the, the field trials. And then there's some buttons down at the bottom here where you can download different tables. Uh, this first one will download a table of the matches. So we'll have your search term with the selected match database term. It can also download all the lines that don't have a match and then the download all button will sort of download a version of the table that's displayed in the website here. And just to demonstrate how we can find similar matches, um, what I'll do is I'll add, just add some spaces to here. I'll change these to underscore. And you can see how it can still find matches even with small variations in the line names. 
So here, even though there's a space between the LES and the, the ID number, it still found the match here. So in this case, what you would most likely want to do is add this as a, an accession and add this as a synonym for that accession. So at this point, we know that these two lines are not in the database and that we need to add them. So the way we do that is create an accession upload template. And this will contain all the properties of the germplasm lines that we want to add to the database. If there is a line that already exists with the same name, it will be updated. So that in this case, if we had these variations, we would add this as the accession name, and we would add this as the synonym, and it would add this variation as a synonym for that existing line. So the properties for this template, there are two required properties, and they are the accession name and species name. So the accession name has to be a unique name for the germplasm line. And we ask that if your breeding program already has some similar lines in the database, that we, we ask you to try to follow the naming convention that was already used in the past. So if your breeding program used, you know, a dash as the delimiter, we ask that you continue to use the dash as the delimiter, so that way we can try to reduce the possible number of duplicates in the database. I think I'm get this thing. I think so too. Um, just quick, quick question or, or comment to, to viewers here. If you um, aren't specifically wanting to say something, please mute. <laughs> Thanks. The species name is the uh, genus and species name for the line. So in this case, we have Triticum Stephen. You can also have Durham lines. Are, Dave, are those the two um, species that are on T3 weed at the moment, Triticum estivum and Triticum durum? Or do you know if there are others? And There are others you know? as well. So I think breed base already came with a whole list of different species. So there, I think okay. there are other Triticum species in there as well. So we can get, if you're interested in different species, we can get you a list of what's in the database and then we can add new ones if we need to. Uh, the population name column is used if you want to add your germplasm lines to a population. And a population in breed base is used by some of their analytical tools on the website. Uh, you can also do this at a later point, so you don't have to do it right away. But if you add it to the accession template, it will add that line directly to that population. So it's just a way of grouping accessions, and it's used by some of the tools on the website. T3 is using the organization name column as the breeding program. So this column should have um, the same name as an existing breeding program. So again, if you had to look those up, you go to the manage breeding programs page and find your breeding program in this list and include that as the organization name for this uh, upload template. Then the synonyms column includes any alternate names for the line, and you can include multiple synonyms. They just have to be separated with a comma. The variety column we're using as sort of the release variety name. So if the germplasm has been released, you can use this to give it the uh, variety name, particularly if it's different than, than the accession name. The country of origin can be used uh, to specify where the, the line originated from. Uh, we typically leave that blank unless it's, you know, not the United States. The notes column can be used to add any um, other details about the line. The accession numbers column can be used for registered accession numbers. So this, this is if there's a registered PI number for grant or CI number. And again, you can give multiple accession numbers by separating them with a comma. And then the format for the accession number is the prefix followed by a space followed by the registered number. And then we always want to have your PERDI pedigree. So if you have the pedigree string for the line, you can add that here. And at the moment, these aren't being parsed. Uh, so they're just stored as is as a text field in the database. 
Um, so at some point in the future, we'd like to parse these, these simple, at least just A slash B lines uh, per the strings. So that way we can have the interactive pedigree tool working. But for now, they're just stored as is in the database as a text field. And then you can also add the filial generation. Uh, so this is the example that I have for these two lines that needs to be added to the database. And what I'll do is I'll download that. And then to add the lines to the database, what you do is you go to the Manage and Accessions page. And then there's this Add or Upload Accession Info button or uh, link in the top right. So you click that. And what we're doing is we're uploading a file. And again, here on this upload uh, dialog box, there's more information about the columns that are needed for that template. So all this information, you know, I have in the notes here, but it's also in all these upload dialogs as well, if you need to refer back to it. So I choose my upload template. And this will check to see if the lines already exist in the database. So what this is saying that these two lines don't exist in the database, that there aren't any matches. And it says that these two lines will be added. If they did exist in the database, it would have the lines that will be updated down here. So we just have two new lines and their properties listed here. Click the Add Accessions button and they will be added to the database. And then we can click these links here to see the details about the accessions. So we can see our name has been added here. And then our properties are in this uh, additional info section here. So we can see the synonym that we added, the accession number that we added. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you have a, a PI number, it will automatically create a link to Grin down here. Uh, the PUI is added automatically. So the organization has the breeding program here, the Purdy pedigree and the filial generation are all listed here. So you can verify that everything was uploaded correctly here. And then the same for our second line. All right, any, um, any questions on adding germplasm to the database? And now the trickiest part is making sure that, you know, that we're not adding duplicates. So I'd highly encourage everyone to use this germplasm search tool to search your germplasm names to make sure that, you know, they don't exist in the database already. Uh, Nick asks if pedigree strings are parsed, and right now we are not parsing them. Right. Um, I I believe I mean there are definitely uh, parsing scripts kicking around, and um, if this is a feature that people would like, uh, we can definitely you know identify the best parsing uh, script and and use it. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a, a backburnered feature at the moment. Yeah, so we'd like to parse at least the simple ones at some point, but for now they're mm. just being stored as is. You know what, one thing that we maybe should do is just have a link to the Purdy, the original Purdy paper <laughs> so that people, people can see it. Um, just to remind everybody how, how Purdy strings work, but anyway. Yeah, that's true, that would be good. <laughs> 